People often ask me, how do you service an electric car? And to be honest, it can be quite a drawn out complicated procedure. So in this next video, I'm going to be going step by step through a typical full electric car service. So let's begin. Park your car on level ground in a well lit garage, as good lighting will come in handy with the more complicated parts in this instructional video. When the car's in position, we can start. Step 1. Topping up the windshield washer reservoir. This is admittedly the easiest part of the service, which simply involves filling your reservoir with an appropriate windshield cleaning agent. Step 2. With the windshield fluid topped up, ensure the hood is closed, and now move the car out of the garage. Continue moving the vehicle until you have it in position at a cafe or restaurant, and then you can use the money you would have spent on oil, filters, parts and labour on good food instead. And that is what servicing and life is like with an electric car. Cheers! <laughs> Speaking of saving money, at the time of recording this video, it's been 15 months since I bought my electric car, and in that time I have not bought any gas, not even a single drop. Expensive and dirty gas stations just are not a part of my life anymore, which is pretty damn cool. Not only that, my car has now reached a milestone, so to celebrate this occasion, I baked my signature cake, a delicious vanilla and onion cheesecake. Yes, not only is this the first privately registered electric car in Slovakia, it's now five years old, which means happy birthday electric car. Being five years old also means that the car's warranty has now expired. And this is good because I want to make a small modification. So I got busy writing an email to Mitsubishi to hunt down a special part using my abysmal Slovak language ability. But just a week later, I was told my new shifter plate was ready to pick up. All right, time to pick up a very expensive piece of plastic. And just 106 euro later, Christmas had come early. Just like that I've got myself a new faceplate. Check that out. But will it fit? Well, the answer is yes. In fact, it was so simple that I made a quick guide for anyone to do it. So first, remove the center console by taking out this plastic plug and this one on the other side. Then pull out the plastic panel between the seats Doing so will reveal this screw, which you'll need to undo. Lastly, remove the screw holding the center console to the floor in the back. After that, the center console will simply lift out. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now you'll have easy access to the shifter mechanism. Next, remove the gear knob by turning it anti-clockwise, which will allow you to remove the shifter plate by unclipping these four clips. Unclip those with a screwdriver and your old shifter plate will pop right off. Then lift off the shifter slider. Next, pry off this little metal disc. With that removed, it'll allow you to pop out this short rod, which locks the top shifter block in place. And with that removed, the shifter block lifts out easily. This is where you can see exactly what's stopping you from getting those extra regenerative braking options that the iMeve has. It's nothing more than a chunk of plastic. So drill it out. It'll end up looking a bit like this, with new slots for the shifter to slide into. Then you just put the shifter block back into the car, and make sure the lever slots into the new spaces comfortably. You might want to drill out a little more if it doesn't. When you're satisfied, turn on the ignition to make sure the new shifter slots register on the dashboard. You should see Park, Reverse, Neutral, Drive, but here's something new, B Mode. And then there's C Mode too. We'll test those out very soon. In the meantime, put the shifter slider back into place in preparation for the new shifter plate. Though you may find you need to cut off this clip on the new shifter, as it has a different place to this clip on the old shifter. As you can see, I filed my clips off on each side. Now all that's left to do is clip the shifter plate back into place, reattach the gear knob, put the center console back into position, and replace the two screws and plugs that you took out at the beginning. And that's it. It really is that easy. It's so easy it makes you wonder why they did it in the first place. And the only question remaining, what do these new gear positions actually do? Right, what I'm going to do in this test, in each gear, drive, 
B and C. I'm going to measure the acceleration to 80 and then the deceleration and regen back down to, well, about 20 k's an hour. So. Well, I hope that's been an interesting and educational video for those of you watching. I've got a lot more learning to do to figure out exactly how much regen and all that works in each gear selector, but uh, it's food for thought. Anyway, until the next video, bye.